According to my parents, raising children in the country, all cities were bad. My foods are not good for you. They're evil. They taste funny and they have crap in them. But no, <laughs> that doesn't happen. This is family function. <laughs> Most of my time is really good because I spend a lot of it reading and having good cups of coffee. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Far Away Nearby. This is episode 23. I am your host, DJ Star Sage. And with me, of, as always, I have the fair Duchess Sue. Good day. <laughs> Hello, Sue. How are you? I am wonderful. And yourself? I'm doing pretty all right. Um, we have some new things to play around with here. We have a few delights for your ears. And uh, if we don't have anything else to say, we can go ahead and start and talk about our weeks. Are you good to do that? I am good to do that. So and so, how was your how was your week, Sue? Well, my week was kind of good and kind of bad. <laughs> um, as usual, I sit around and read books and watch television and and things of that nature. But um, this week, my youngest granddaughter, Red, moved out of her her family home. And into an apartment with her boyfriend. Oh. And although mom is allegedly okay with this, as is mom's uh, current husband, she got married a few years ago. She got remarried a few years ago to a much mm-hmm. nicer man than the first one. But, but, uh, and sister Cleo, Cleo is also supposedly go good with this mm-hmm. but she's pretty depressed uh no i think for a little bit of background um the duchess and i have talked about this off air and y- uh, you mentioned that uh red and her boyfriend actually have been together for a little while now at least yes they started dating when they were juniors in high school i think maybe Okay, so and they, actually- and they got to know each other when they were sophomores in high school. Mm-hmm. So, and they are now like uh, three years out of high school, so they've known each other a good five years or six oh. years. I mean, it's not like they've, and they've dated for much of that time. Well, they certainly didn't rush into things. No, it's not like we got to know somebody and and took off to Colorado with them or something. <laughs> I don't uh, know anybody who did that. <laughs> oh, you don't? <laughs> uh, anyway, and sister is pretty depressed about this. She is never well. She's been separated from from Red prior to this. Uh, she went to Europe for three weeks, and Red went to Australia for three weeks at different times in their in their uh, high school. I guess uh, Cleo went to Europe in when she was in, in junior high and, and uh, Red went to Australia when she was in high school. Um, and from time to time, the one or the other of them has stayed with me by themselves and the other one was at home. Not very often. They usually come in pair, in, in, as a pair, as a unit. They And Cleo is just not dealing with this real well, apparently. Now, she hasn't told me this, and I don't know that she's actually said this to Mom, but Mom seems to be certain that she is terribly depressed. And she does seem a little anxious, more anxious than usual, uh, and that tends to affect me because I am now tuning into her depressions and anxieties a little more. So that you know, tends to make me depressed and anxious a little more. 
you know, just a point of clarification for our listeners. Um, th- this is Mama Bear's first child to leave home, right? Yes, they, we have not had a child move out of the house. They, like I say, they've been places for a few weeks. Uh, they came now. They used to come and spend when they were tiny, um, like when they were three, four years old. They would mm-hmm. come and spend the summer in in town with me, and um, then they would see their uh, fathers grandparents at the same time they always stayed with me because mom mama bear did not trust uh the other grandmother Mm -hmm. um so how long ago did red move in with her boyfriend oh it's just this week okay it's been like uh it's been like maybe four i think she moved on Monday, they started moving Monday night uh, when she got off work and then she had Tuesday and Wednesday off and they, and I think she may have spent the night Monday night uh-huh. because Mama Bear and I went over there Tuesday uh, to see to see the apartment and to help her make some stuff and I think that that's um, and and of course, Cleo was in school, so she didn't get to make the trip. Gotcha. So I think that um, to summarize, that we'll be calling your your uh, granddaughters the Grand Duchesses, and this, <laughs> this will be a continuing saga because certainly, uh, just from the premise here, it's going to take a while to adjust to that. Oh, I, I, I think I think so. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then uh, another fair point uh, is, uh, you know, you were telling me that you actually thought that uh, Red's boyfriend was a, uh, a a person that you could hang out with. Yes, I, I do. Although he seems not to like me. Uh, just prior to our last election, where the nation elected some warrant to the presidency, uh, we were discussing some local politics, and I sort of he said that he was not going to vote for a particular senator senator in our unicameral. And I uh-huh. told him that he couldn't vote for him or not vote for him because he didn't live in his district. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he got really offended at that because what he wanted to vote for was actually that the unicam man managed to pass a bill that but the unicameral managed to pass a bill uh, deleting um, the death penalty mm-hmm. from the laws in this state. And then the governor decided to try and get this onto the ballot, which he managed to do because many people in the state thought that was a terrible idea. And, of course, they got it onto this the as a referendum onto this onto the election and of course the people voted it down so of course we now we once again have the death penalty so so red's boyfriend which i think we we uh slated the idea of calling him johnny i i think that would be a good idea okay so john johnny uh wasn't very informed well, he, yeah, he, he was a little annoyed with me because I told him he could not vote for for Mr. Chambers, which is the state senator that he was annoyed with. Uh, uh, and I happen to love this guy a great deal. So I think we're having a And most <laughs> but most of our politics, as far as I can tell, most of our politics are quite similar. So it's mm. just this one thing, but he was really upset about it. <laughs> so how so, was how was your week? Well, I continue on my path with the diet. Um, let's see. Back in February when I started this, I was around two forty ish. I don't mind mentioning the numbers because. I own them and (laughs) uh, it's important for people to know these things. If we're going to be honest, Um, 
I have to date about 25 pounds. Cool. And yeah. And um, Billy and I decided that we were going to celebrate. Now, um, we've been very diligent, probably very diligent about observing our diets. And so, of course, that's high protein, low carb, and low fat. So, um, you know, whereas when we were saving up to live in this house, we had sleeves of sandwich cookies that we would just pick up at the dollar store and <laughs> sit in our living room and, you know, mow them down like we we're a wood chipper. Um, now it is, it's much more um, calculated and meals are simple. But they're satisfying. You know, we'll we'll have like a chicken breast, for example, and vegetables. And then we're continuing on with the little naughty dessert that we made of the cottage cheese that was low fat and low sodium. But we uh, are not only just mixing in the sugar-free pudding mix, but we are now putting it in the food processor so that it is like Ooh. a cheesecake. Um, oh, that sounds actually pretty good, except for <laughs> the sugar-free products. I, I can, I can eat the low, the low fat, low, low sodium, low fat cottage cheese, mm -hmm. uh, not the sugar-free. Um, well, you can also use different flavorings in it. You know, like um, there are extracts you can use. It's uh, true. And the a lot of the coffee syrups that people keep nowadays. Mm -hmm. that you pour and mix in those work well for flavoring but we celebrated one of my milestones uh, we celebrated one of my milestones recently by taking a road trip um, we've been in our house oh about five years this fall mm -hmm. and um, we're actually halfway between two large cities Decide we are going to take a trip to the other city that I don't work in. So um, it's interesting because while I grew up in the state, I pretty much stuck to the country. You know, um, I, I've mentioned before that my folks raised us to believe that these uh, that cities are dirty places that you'll just <laughs> love mom and dad. You know, anything that'll take you away from mom and dad. But. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> to one of our area's larger shopping malls. And, you know, I'm not one for huge crowds, but if I'm anticipating it, it's, uh, you know, it's much easier to process that, that um, excitement. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we really enjoyed ourselves. We, you know, it was about an hour drive and we found a, uh, a, a local, I guess installment or branch or whatever you want to call it, a local franchise of one of our favorite restaurants. Um, it's called core life eatery. And basically the idea is that it's sort of like a salad restaurant. You go in and they are, they give you these huge bowls of food, very satisfying, but on the menu, it's very transparent in that all of the calorie counts are right there. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you're a person like ourselves who are watching what they eat, you can plan your day accordingly. So you could decide if you want the dressing or if you would just rather have like a sprinkle of lemon and lime on your salad. Mm -hmm. Or they also do broths and they, they have mm -hmm. what they call bone broth. And apparently this is the old fashioned type of broth that you make with the meat bone in the pot simmering mm -hmm. so that you get all the nutrients Mm -hmm. And so they, they offer these broths uh, or dressings along with your salad. And of course they have all the proteins. Like you can have, um, uh, you know, a roasted chicken or you can have fish or you could have beef. And it's just very satisfying because the bowl is just huge. Um, but we went shopping at the mall so we went shopping at the mall and they have this wonderful store that just makes Billy's eyes light up because <laughs> there isn't another one in this part of the state. Um, it, it's almost like Ikea in the sense that they only put them in larger areas. Mm -hmm. And this store is, is 
it has like patio furniture it has uh, home furnishing and it's it's like i don't know it's like a, a lowe's or a home depot super mega store and it's just wow. called at home and the place is just huge and we walked around there for probably a couple of hours looking at stuff for the patio that we haven't set up yet and that we want to and you know maybe silently adopting some of the garden gnomes as we walk by and we said we want this one and we want that one <laughs> <laughs> I, I am notorious for wind chimes. I um, when I go into a store and I see them hanging, I just can't resist to touch them. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> to have some wind chimes out on our patio once we get one. But um, the thing that uh, you know was the the high point of the celebration was that for the first time in two months, I got to have ice cream. <laughs> and we discovered <laughs> and of ice cream that is uh sweetened with a sugar substitute that i've talked about before which is all natural called stevia mm-hmm. this particular ice cream is made by a west coast dairy company so it may actually be available in your neck of the woods um it's called halo like an angel top halo top and their website is halotop.com and they are known for low fat ice creams that are sweetened with stevia but mm. don't compromise on the flavor and the wonderful thing is is that right on the containers in big bold uh you know character they have the calorie counts for these ice creams now that calorie count is not per serving because if you look at the little nutritional things on most packaging it'll yeah, say yeah. serving size is you know six pieces <laughs> or two <laughs> tablespoons or whatever it's like give me a break the serving you know the uh the calorie count on the container is for the entire pint of ice cream oh that's more reasonable <laughs> Yes. So Billy and I will go out to this restaurant, have our healthy salad, and then we will go out to the car after we've gone to the grocery store and picked out our pints of ice cream. And then we'll just sit there and eat our ice cream like normal people <laughs> just coming from a uh, you know an ice cream stand. That's reasonable. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's because of the type of stevia that they're using. But uh, so far, their products have a mild hint of cherry. You know, the the almond roco was the flavor that I tried first. So, of mm-hmm. course, that doesn't uh, take away from it because you might even expect a little bit of cherry in an almond roco type of flavor. Mm-hmm. But um, the other one that I had recently that was quite good was pistachio. And oh. that had a hint of cherry, too, for some odd reason. But Billy, uh, his favorite one so far is they have a oatmeal cookie one, mm. and that just plays right into his taste buds because <laughs> he's supposed to be eating gluten free. Mm-hmm. So his morning breakfast consists of a bowl of steel cut oats, and that's one of his favorite things is is that uh, you know chump of raw oats like that. So. Mm-hmm. He, the oatmeal cookie ice cream just, uh, you know, just really excited him. Well, that's so. good. I didn't realize that he was, was gluten free. Mm-hmm. Did that happen with his well, when he was going to the doctor about his sleeping? He he um, he has several food allergies that he tested four years ago. Mm. And your uh, your income and your lifestyle dictates what you're able to do at home. <laughs> And so, um, you know, having two incomes, it's easier for us to shop for things that you wouldn't be able to necessarily buy on a mm-hmm. single budget. But uh, he decided when we just started doing our dieting that we we're going to do it together. Mm-hmm. And because it's easier to buy one serve or, you know, one supply of something than two, I'm going along for the ride. And he's telling me, you know, um, just wait, just wait, you know, after it's been a week or two, you're going to notice a difference because as much as people like to believe that it's a hype that, uh, you know, wheat is bad for you. Um, it, 
doesn't really even have to do anything with allergies. It's just the fact that modern food in this country is so manufactured and so processed, <laughs> and put so much stuff into it. I mean, wheat is in literally everything. It's like breathing air. And yes. when you consider the fact that we um, we engineer these things that we grow to put in things that we put into our body, there's all these chemicals they treat with. Now, I wouldn't believe any of this if it weren't for the fact that the other year we traveled to Ireland and Billy mm-hmm. did not obey the um, gluten-free you know, dictates whatsoever. He didn't, uh, he ate whatever he wanted there. Didn't matter if it was bread. He did not feel sick at all that whole week we were there. So it tells you that overseas, their wheat is different than here. It, you know, it, it's harder to try to source things from out of the country if you want to eat what, whatever you want yeah. versus, yeah. you know, you try for a week just to see how it affects you not eating things that contain wheat. If you notice a difference, it just gets your mind going to think, what am I putting into my body that I felt this way? And Mm. so far it's an experiment because Billy seems to think that once I have stopped eating wheat, that I will be uh, easier to wake up in the morning and that I will be, less of a grump before I've had my second (laughs) cup of coffee. I'm not disagreeing with him because it is becoming easier for me to be more alert in the morning. So there could be some truth to it. You know, like I said, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, make infomercials and tell everybody (laughs) you've got to do this, but I do have a cousin, a blood relation cousin who has the same problem with eating wheat Mm -hmm. I have to wonder if it's, if it's in my genetics, there might be some truth to it. Well, I was put on a gluten-free diet when a number of years ago and kept to it for about two years. And I was put on a gluten-free diet because I went, I was sent to a holistic neurologist for, because of the issues I had, this was before I was diagnosed with, MS. Right. You, 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 uh, for our listeners, um, I don't know if you still, if it's, it's not necessarily something that goes away, but you have had uh, fibromyalgia. I have had, I, I have had and still have fibromyalgia. Um, and for those who are not aware of it, fibromyalgia is a condition of the, the muscles and the nerves. Yeah, I, I think so. Basically it's a condition that makes your body hurt. Uh, <laughs> and it has symptoms that are rather similar to MS, which is why sometimes it takes a uh, a lot of effort to to separate the two. This is this is true, and it is not uncommon for people to have both. Now, I was also diagnosed with MS, but when I left one state and came to another, I was undiagnosed with MS. So, your guess is as good as mine. If I have that, there is not a specific test for ms shall we move on Uh, to our topics yeah we probably should because then Uh, we decided that this week we were going to talk a little bit about body image and shopping yes so you know as as part of my journey of losing the weight increasingly more aware of my wardrobe now uh, i've mentioned before that billy works in retail so uh, one could say that arguably we have more clothes than i would ever (laughs) need apart from that problem now i have a different problem because i should be getting rid of clothes that i that don't fit me anymore because they're too big you have outgrown them in a sense but by getting smaller (laughs) and so of course in theory, if I get rid of these clothes, there'll be less temptation to let myself stray on the diet. Mm-hmm. Also, just looking forward to getting rid of the clothes so that, um, well, you know, maybe I could have another foot of uh, walking space around the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it's not school shopping season, so we we won't go on a uh, a trip down yesteryear lane to when we were kids and and uh, school shopping. But you know, certainly we could probably talk about memories we have of clothes when we were kids. You no, know, I I remember you're one of several siblings, and your brother is quite a bit di- older. Mm-hmm. Um, in your family, did you get hand me downs or? Oh yes. You did? I, I had two older sisters mm-hmm. and I got one older sister's clothes one year and the next year I got the other sister's clothes. And for a number of years in grade school, they dra- they had the same clothes Oh, <laughs> uh, or, or at least a, a, a portion of their like school clothes and, and, and go to church clothes and those clothes were the same clothes so that I wore one sister's clothes one year and I wore the exact same clothes the next year. So it looked like even though they fit me, they looked like I was like wearing the same things that I wore the year before. And, and I got teased about that a lot because I was the only kid in school that that happened to, but it wasn't that I was wearing. It's not that I was wearing the same clothes. I was just wearing similar clothes and then I think that when I got out of, when I outgrew those clothes, they went to Goodwill or somewhere. I don't know what happened to them, but. I don't remember getting too many hand-me-downs just simply because I was the youngest child. So usually when you went uh, clothes shopping, your older siblings got them first. Yeah, pretty much. I usually got at least one new dress or outfit a year course until i graduated from high school the requirement for young ladies in all the schools i attended was to wear a dress Uh if you lived in the country and you were and you lived on a working ranch or farm and you were female you were allowed to wear jeans on certain days when it was really really cold Mm. So now I know that you didn't go to catholic school so no (laughs) i'm sure you didn't get in trouble uh, about the skirt, but I'm sure that there was an expectation that, or wasn't there an expectation? Because we were talking in our last episode about the the fashion of the '60s and '70s, and that you know women just wore mini skirts; they didn't wear them because they were expected to. Well, by the time I was in high school, both my sisters left, and my, and most of their clothes left with them, whether they were too small for them or not. I I don't know, but after my father passed away, I don't recall wearing any hand-me-downs after that. Uh, For the most part, I my clothes were uh, new or from Goodwill. or Occasionally, I wore my mother's clothes, which was really disgusting. Because <laughs> in that time period, in the 60s, there were there were adult clothes and there were children clothes and and right. adolescent clothes and not like they're adolescent clothes today they're they're <laughs> adult clothes some adult clothes and as appropriate right they were like ugly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't know i mean you know they they looked all right on mom but but going to school in those clothes was like and even my mother realized this. She didn't. She tried not to ever put me in that position. But occasionally, the laundry wasn't done or something, and and I ended up in in something of hers. Now, were you both the same stature or the same body type? I don't know that we were the same body type, but and I was taller than mom by the time I was in the <laughs> ninth grade, eighth ninth grade. So the mom's skirts became mini skirts. <laughs> mom's skirts could, yeah. And she didn't wear really long dresses. She wore her dresses down to the middle of her knee. That was not when I was in junior high, in, in, in middle school, whatever you call that. That was not inappropriate. Okay. However, as I was in the like ninth and tenth grades, skirts were inching up. And so it was sort of inappropriate. (laughs) By the time we moved to the big city, when we moved back to so that she could take care of her mother, Mm -hmm. young women were definitely wearing mini skirts. And I made and remodeled some of my clothes to to reflect that because I had been in 
I had been in 4-H all the time I was in my home state. I love Colorado. <laughs> I would move back to Colorado in a second. When we moved away from there, to, to I, I was wearing my own clothes, and and that's when and that's pretty much when clothes started to get shorter. Right. The, so you were saying that up until your sisters left home, you had their hand me downs, and that mm-hmm. and you started getting your own clothes. Now, was your mom handy with needle and thread? Did you learn to do your own sewing from her, or did she do the um, sewing? She was, I think she was probably pretty handy with the needle and thread. She did not make clothing. My Mm -hmm. oldest sister did, and she was really good with sewing. My mother did a lot of mending, and and she could whip it, she could whip through a hem really fast. And she made my sister's cheerleading band majorette and pep club outfits so i guess she had um i guess she was pretty good with the needle and thread my sisters mm-hmm. i wanted to keep this and i don't know what happened to it i know that did something with it that's my next the oldest sister the redhead there's a lot of red hair floating through you could call her big red yes we could call her big red <laughs> or grandma red <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, she seemed to have gotten rid of, of those things. But uh, my oldest sister's majorette, drum majorette outfits and, and stuff were really cool. Now, I'm not sure there was ever a point I could have worn them because I am, although I am shaped a lot, like I, I have a similar body type. I'm, I am, my bones are bigger and I am heavier and I always was when, when I was in the, um, ninth tenth grade i was i was bigger than she was uh she was this thin yeah. one in our family <laughs> in in my family my grandmother was very handy with needle and thread and i heard a lot of stories about the outfits that she had made for my mom growing up mm-hmm. and there are plenty of wonderful photographs of my mom and her sisters and my uncle for that matter possibly wearing handmade clothes. Mom inherited some of those skills. I do remember mom doing things like putting patches on jeans, mm-hmm. <laughs> possibly having some of my sister's dresses, fixing socks and doing buttons. About the time my generation came about, my sisters and my brother and I, mom didn't really make as much for us kids. That was more grandma's thing. Apparently, according to some members of my family, my sister Betty had to wear boys' clothes for the first year or two of her life. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I I find that boys' clothes are a different color when you're a baby. There's yeah. not a lot of difference in them. You Well, some of the little, little uh, and I will call them stupid, outfits that they put one-year-olds in, two-year-olds yeah. in, are, are like, you know, might have ties and and uh, uh, stuff like that 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 might differentiate them from girls' clothing. But babies' clothing, until you're like three and can walk, right? Really pretty baby clothes. I mean, yeah, until you actually have something to do with your legs, we don't, you know, care what gender you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're wearing diapers. Uh, and it depends on the parent, but many children wear diapers until they're like three or four. Uh-huh. So what <laughs> what difference does this make? I, I, right. just, I, I can't see a problem with this. But if she were teased about it, especially by the older brother and the older sister. I have one brother. I just oh. don't talk about him. Much. Okay. <laughs> I know that, but I was trying to place him in. In the order of the uh, Jughead is uh, the sort that has moved to a red state so that he can not only skip out on his taxes and keep his guns, but possibly also not pay as much child support. So he's the next oldest from you. In the grand <laughs> scheme of things, my dad was probably very relieved in an old fashioned way when my brother came along because here their second child was supposed to be a boy and didn't make it. Mm-hmm. 
we, our next show is going to be after Easter. So I'm going to play a voicemail that we were left. You have new mail. <laughs> Hi, this is Patrick from Central New York. And I was actually wondering how everyone on the show spent their Easter. I was hoping you could, uh, if you could talk about that on your show. Thank you. So, Sue, do you have any plans for the upcoming holiday? Well, no, I am not a practicing Christian, though I grew up one. And I don't have small children. I don't even have small grandchildren anymore. <laughs> They're all adults now. So I really don't have any plans whatsoever. Sometimes in the past, I have gone to church with my granddaughter or with with my granddaughters and their mother, but I haven't gotten an invite to that, so I am not going to go. I uh, my daughter lived when Mama Bear lived here in Lincoln when the girls were really tiny. I would uh-huh. take them to church uh, a lot because Mama Bear was taking weekend college classes. And she wanted them to have a church experience. Now, of course, at that time, they went to the playroom because they were tiny. Right. Uh, The one thing I like about church is they sing hymns. Because I I, I like singing hymns, but they don't sing the hymns that I did. And it's a different church. I grew up in a Methodist church, and they attend a Baptist church. One could argue that a typical... Uh, what would you call it? Middle America Easter meal would be to have a ham and have, you know, deviled eggs and whatever. <laughs> are, are, yeah. are these things that you and the Duke uh, like from time to time? Uh, yeah, the Duke likes ham and he doesn't like deviled eggs. One of my favorite foods. And I do oh. make them occasionally and I eat all of them. <laughs> I usually only make like three eggs into deviled eggs that when I'm you know when I eat them probably in a in in one day I'll eat like half of them for lunch and then the other half dinner time or something or sometimes I just have all six of them as or all six pieces as they for lunch but the treats that we have on our diet is that um, we'll make up hard boiled eggs. Mm-hmm. And pack those in our lunch because for anybody who is trying to be healthy and trying to fight cravings, things like pickles and mm-hmm. eggs, hard boiled eggs specifically, are really good to satisfy you. So, for in my household, we're I don't think we're doing anything special now. My my sister Betty is in touch and has said she wanted to get around to doing some things together. Billy's mother's birthday was just the other day and we had some sibling drama going on there because Billy's brother who lives 15 minutes away from his mother, but she only hears from him every few months <laughs> decided to peg one over on us. And he made her birthday celebration. Now, of course those plans were to happen today and When we first contacted Billy's mom to say, we're busy on Saturday. Could we do something with you on Sunday? She took offense and suddenly she had planned. She couldn't do anything together on Sunday, but then she changed her tune and now we're going. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll, we'll be getting together with Billy's mom for a makeup birthday celebration and we were supposed to get together with her for an Easter meal together. I guess I took too long to get back to Betty on oh. <laughs> planning that. And now suddenly she is making a meal for her husband and family. Whereas before, uh, I got the impression she had no interest in doing that. For anybody who's listening, if you would like to join us on the fourth Saturday of the month, we're on pride48.com. You can go ahead and join us in the chat room. And if you'd like, just shoot us an email. Let us know that you wouldn't mind uh, joining us on the microphone. You know, the usual applies. Please make sure you've got a good high-speed internet connection, that you've got a quiet room that you can be in. 
with no distractions. So thank you for listening to the far away nearby. You can visit our webpage at tfnpodcast.com. Find our fan page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at TFNDJ. And visit our companion blog on Tumblr. Our show is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. Send us an email at tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Text or leave a message at 720-230-6919. This show is a member of the Pride 48 Network. Find other shows at pride48.com. 